Now finished practice five. So now we're on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday practice schedule. So it's good for our guys to get their work in one day to recover, get in the weight room, get it cleaned up, and then kind of do it again. So we're going to be on this format really all the way to the end of spring ball. So proud of where our guys are at. Um, obviously a lot to still improve in, a lot to grow in from fundamentals, technical um, stuff. The situational stuff is the big thing we're really building in. Today we put in kind of the logo shot zone area into the low red zone, and then we had our first two minute end of game, which is good to rep those mechanics. So little by little, we're building all the situations. Then Saturday, we're gonna pick it up with some short yardage goal line. So always building these situations up, up to our first scrim scrimmage, which is really a, about a week and a half away. So proud of where our guys are growing, competing. Um, that's the biggest thing we preach every single day is, is you gotta compete with yourself first. And that starts with how you show up in the morning, how I'm handling myself in the training room, how I'm handling myself and how I eat, sleep, hydrate, so I can come to meetings and get the most of it. Because at the end of the day, like, we have the same amount of practices as everybody else we're playing. It's not like, oh, we're going to find a way. No, we have the same amount of practice. We're going to be efficient. We're going to get in and out. But we have to compete and hold each other to high standards. And it's really player-led on the field. And that's where we're growing and, it's, and seeing our team step up in that way is if something's not right at the practice field, it's not me or a coach running to get it fixed. It's one of our players running over there to, to get on to make sure the standard's set. So excited we're growing by no means there yet, but excited the, the steps we're taking. We even saw a little skirmish today. I mean, is, yep. is the intensity where you want it to be at this point? Continually trying to raise it, BJ. I think we're in a good spot for practice five, um, but got to continue to raise that. I mean, we talk about we want our best competition to be against each other. O-line, D-line, corner versus receivers, linebackers versus, versus tailbacks. The best competition needs to be right here so iron can sharpen every single day and we can grow. So um, it's, it's in a good place right now. BJ definitely not where it needs to be as we grow this. The thing about spring ball, no different than fall camp and no different than the season, we want to make sure practice five is our is we're continually going to be better going forward. Right? As we look back, practice six need to be way better than five and so on and so forth. Who do you think maybe has improved catching your eye that you know, this is the time that everybody takes to try to, you know, get yeah. better on whatever they want to do. Yeah. A couple people that maybe have caught your eyes that maybe you think have improved from wherever they were last year. Yeah. Now. Good question, Bob. I mean, the, the exciting thing for us is we got a decent amount of guys out from season injuries so that got recovered and had surgery in January that aren't practicing through spring. So we're playing with, you know, a lot of guys that um, maybe hadn't gotten reps before or, or younger and just came in. So it's really cool to see these guys cut their teeth learn and grow, figure out what it takes offense or defensively. So I don't know if there's one guy that's kind of jumped out to me only through practice five. Obviously, as we keep stacking these practices, I'm sure some guys will start to highlight, but no one right now that I'm going to uh, name just verbatim because I want to continue to see how they continue to stack these practices back to back. I think back to practice one and Maddox was, was doing so much more than we thought he would do. Mm -hmm. Where is he right now in his recovery? Yep. Is he ahead of schedule? And what are your hopes for what he can do the next couple of weeks? Yeah. Maddox is doing a great job. I mean, just who he is as a person and as a competitor, he is working his tail off in the training room to get back. He's really at the same spot in regards to what we can do with him. He's obviously healing and growing, um, but right now he's really seven on seven, no team reps for the near future. We'll see if as we get closer to the end of spring ball, if he can get some team, but right now he's just still limited to that. But he's doing a great job. He's you know one of the smartest um, football players I've been around. He's growing every, so he's growing a ton and he's healing, but right now he's still at that same spot. How's he kind of taken in that, you know, almost competition that he's now going to have to face for that quarterback yeah. position? He's doing a great job. I mean, Maddox is a competitor. Um, that's all he ever wants. No, even after going in after the bowl game and talking with our quarterbacks, like, hey guys, we're going to go out and bring in a transfer quarterback that fits here. Talking with Maddox, he's like, coach, I just want a shot to compete. And that's who he is. That's who he's been since he's been here. And he has not changed, and he just wants a shot to compete, and he's doing a really good job. How's, How's the key to you know, integrating Malachi into the mm -hmm. offense, terminology, and yep. um, you have to be, um, I guess, deliberate in, in how you do it, I suppose. Yeah, well, especially for a new offense for Malachi, Coach Cutter's doing a great job. Meetings on the side, getting extra time with him, making sure he can take these installs home with him so he can grow in it. Because the other quarterbacks, majority of them have been here. So some of the terminology, some of the stuff, yeah, we're changing things to streamline it more. But the majority of the things these guys are aware of, obviously we're evolving our offense, and so he's going to be on the front with that too. Um, but Coach Cutter and the offensive staff are doing a great job, not only in the position meetings themselves, Jay, but also extra time because he needs to learn it because he's brand new in January, and he's doing a good job. How's uh, Latrell Caples coming along? I think he's a guy that people think about the receivers, kind of forget what he did two no years question. ago. Uh, how, how's he looking? BJ, very excited where Latrell's at. Um, not only just in what he's done on the practice field, the first five practices, but how he's leading too. I mean, a guy that 
not only holds himself to a high standard, but he's also bringing guys with him. And not just the receivers, some DBs, some guys on the other side of the ball. Like I see him starting to bring, because he is one of our leaders on our team. And so he's done a great job of that. I mean, you talk about, about a guy that is relentless in the training room before practice to make sure his body is ready to compete at the highest level. And I think a guy like Latrell, when football is taken from you, like it was for him last summer um, when he tore his Achilles, he, he doesn't want that to happen to him again. Now, football is a game where you never know, right? Stuff can happen that's outside your control. But seeing him prep his body to where he can compete the way he has shown is awesome. And not only how he's playing receiver right now, BJ, he's been one of our best special teams guys to this point, too, in regards to all the stuff that Coach Collins wants from him. So very excited where Latrell is and where he's headed to. Going back to Malachi for a second, mm -hmm. what have you seen out of him in terms of his arm talent and, yeah. and some of those intangibles that mm -hmm. it takes to play quarterback? Yeah. Very high arm tell. That, that's something we're very excited about Malachi. has a very talented arm. Now it's the other stuff that we're really working to continue to grow. Still needs to continue to build his body too. And that's been something we've been with um, our dietitian, Coach Hilgar. Like we're working through growing his body, putting some good body armor on him. Um, and just the intricacies of our offense, how to run the pro style offense that we do. And he's picking it up. He's only had five practices. We've only been able to see him play the position for five practices. And he's grown every time. But um, Excited where he's growing to, very talented arm, but still has to continue, continue to develop. And that was the biggest thing we talked to him, his family coming through, and he wants that. He knows that I'm coming to Boise State so I can develop to be the best quarterback and the best version of myself, and he's done a good job with it. You talked a little bit about Latrell being on special teams. What excites you about his possibility of being a returner? Oh, very excited about his possibility of returning. Right now, going through, we had Coach Collins put a returner tryout, essentially, and you know, there's, there's some guys out there that want to be returning that might not be. We had a couple of those guards out there trying to see if they can catch the rock. But um, he's going to be one of our top returners going into this next season. Um, so it's really cool to see him step in that role. Is that more punt return or kick or both? Punt return, or? yep. Okay. See, you kind of mentioned uh, Latrell as a leader. He kind of has a chip on his shoulder, he does. it seems. Mm -hmm. How much of the, the receiver room kind of just like missed that mm -hmm. you know, part, of, part of him? Not even just the production, but just the mentality, I guess. Yeah, Jay, that's a good question. I mean, that, they for sure missed that. Because Latrell is one of the top leaders in that room. There's other leaders, but he's one of the top ones. He, he does have a good edge about himself. I mean, Latrell's a competitor. He's not perfect. He's still taking steps and growing. Um, but he, he competes with that edge. From the training room to the weight room, what he's been able to do with his body all the way, not only last offseason healing up, but then even in January in the winter workouts, in the snow, on the blue, bringing people with him, competing, holding himself to a high standard, and then bringing guys with him. That's the edge he's got, and it's, and it's been cool to see him not only do it in the receiver room, but also start to bring guys from other positions too. I'm sure he could probably elaborate on this, but you know, in, in college you have to worry about coming back at the end of the year because of red shirt rules and medical red shirt rules. In the NFL, you can come back if you're healthy. Yep. His sense of urgency just to get back, like I heard by the end of the year, like he was actually like mm -hmm. looking pretty good in what he could do. Absolutely. So just about his sense of urgency to get back, and, and yep. how, how healthy is he right now? Yeah. Guys? He's. He, <clears throat> I, I'm not going to tell you the exact percentage that he's at because I really don't know that, yeah. Jay. But I know with seeing how he moves, how he preps himself, I mean, he's gotten himself back to be a weapon for us on offense and, like we talked about, as a, as a returner as well on special teams. Um, and that's on him. Now, our trainers have done a phenomenal job with him. Coach Hilgar's done a great job with him. But he's taken what he's needed to do and done it consistently day in and day out. Especially, I mean, it's tough for a young man when you're going through summer workouts and you get hurt and your season gets taken from you. Not doing something he shouldn't, doing exactly what he's supposed to do, and injuries happen. And seeing him respond from that and be like, you know what, it's not over for me. It's not, this is a speed bump, this is tough, no different in life. Like I talk, that's the beautiful thing about this game. You go through hard things in football, but it's still how you respond to them, no different in life. We all know you're gonna hit speed bumps in life. How you respond to him and not bend the knee is everything. And that's why I'm so proud of Latrell and how he handled that situation and how he's continued to grow going forward. I know you had you got a couple of guys out. We saw Mason doing some walkthrough stuff. But on the old line, I mean, how, how do you like how that group's looked through five practices? Yeah. It's been awesome. I mean, obviously with Mason and, uh, and George, or excuse me, Mason and Roger out for spring, um, two guys that have started for us, it's great to get guys reps and try different rotations. And so Coach Keen, Coach Potter's done a great job with that front, um, finding different – um, guys in certain spots and we're continuing just like you guys saw with our blues orange whites I tell guys there's no depth chart in spring ball this is a seating chart we're going to find guy find ways to get guys reps to see who can compete and who can make each other better especially on the offensive line you got to take care of each other 
Is there a guy out there that, that's continuing to grow? And as he does, he's going to get more reps of the blues. Or if he's a white, he's going to get more reps of the oranges. So it's been cool to see that group gel. Obviously, a very close-knit group. It's going to be um, an awesome group for our team because our team is going to go how our fronts go. That's just how college football goes. How you are on the offensive line, how you are on the defensive line is how you're going to play as a team, and that's going to be your mentality. you got to run the ball. You have to stop the run. End of story. That's college football. That's the way it is. And so it's been exciting to see the offensive line with guys out have guys plug and play and have them continue to grow. And and a long way off in a good way. Like, we're excited to see what these guys are growing to. What can you say about the strides Amari McCoy has been making uh, this during the offseason? Yep. So cool to see Amari McCoy this time last year, his first semester on campus, to where he is now. And that, that's been really exciting for us to see where he's grown in a year's time. Um, first off, just in his body. I mean, he's, he's as strong as he's ever been. Um, very explosive. Amari McCoy is, will be one of the best cover corners we've had here in a while. And for him, it's just all about how he responds. He can have two good plays, three good plays, four good plays, 50 good plays. Let's see, how's he gonna respond when maybe something doesn't go his way? Maybe it's even outside of his control. That's been the biggest thing for, for us because he is a big time competitor. He wants to be lights out of the perimeter. And he has the ability to be that consistent. Like I said, I think the world of him are. Not only how he is as a football player, but how he is as a person. I'm um, so excited to see him continue to take steps. So, you know, those are some strong accolades. You know, one of the best cover yep. guys you've had. You know, at what point in the recruiting process, or was it after he got here that you realized that, you know, how, just how high his potential was? Yes. We were excited about how he could cover through the recruiting process. Obviously, there's still a lot of unknowns before you get someone here that can compete. Um, the biggest thing we got here was just we had to grow his body. He needed to put weight on. He needed to put some body, on or body armor on him because the, the college football game, Corners are not just out there on islands covering all day. That's a lot of it. Don't get it twisted. But they're going to create sets and formations to where our corners got to show up and fit. And he's done a great job growing his body. Now he's up there making tackles at the line of scrimmage, make plays because he's growing his body. He seemed to me at the end of the season significantly better at the start of the season. Absolutely. As somebody who's the defensive coordinator last year, yeah. where did he get – I mean, where was he – what was he able to do – late year that he didn't do in the yeah. beginning? Well, especially for Amari, I mean, this is a guy, junior college transfer, that was not promised being a starter, not promised anything, coming and compete. And even to start the season, wasn't the starter. Kept competing, kept getting better, kept learning the defense, kept learning the intricacies. Coach Warren did a great job of them. And so he did keep getting better as the season went on, got the starting job. And once he got it, he did a phenomenal job. Still a lot of stuff to improve on. And that's the exciting part for our whole group. You can be a guy as a starter coming back, two-year starter, never, never started. How are you growing from point A to the end of this, this semester? And then at the end of the semester, we're going to sit down. I'm going to meet with every single player on our team and be like, this is exactly where you are, black and white. This is where we need you to grow to so it's clear for them so they can take the necessary steps. Cool. Back to the O-line for a second. Uh, obviously, uh, you got to replace Cade Barrett through the right tackle spot. How tough is it to replace a guy that has this kind of experience and who's getting some snaps there in the spring? Yeah, the right tackle is a, a big position of need for us. So a lot of competition going through spring. Um, that's a big one for us on the offensive line. Obviously, with four returning starters, that's the big one that we really got to, to figure out as we go through spring. Um, Kyle Cox is doing a great job um, at that position, rolling in. He's working more at left tackle, but we know he can play it right. Hall Schmidt's doing a really good job. Rick's doing a good job. So we just got to keep finding who are, who are our two right tackles that we're going to go into season with. Um, and, that, and that's the biggest thing we're looking for. Obviously, we signed a junior college transfer in Dalen, and we'll see how he can compete when he comes here in the summertime. He'll be here in June. He'll be here in June. Speaking of Kennedy, he had a really good pro day the other yep. day. Touch on the pro day and what you saw in the pro yeah. day from the guys participating. No, really proud of how our guys competed in pro day. Um, obviously, the the injury to Billy breaks your heart, and, but he'll recover from it. He'll be back from it. But proud of how our guys competed and, and got ready for pro day. And it's just so cool to see for our current players to be able to see these guys moving on to that next phase in life and how it works out for them. Drafted, free agent, could be Canada for some of our players. Um, just excited for them to take the next step from Boise State to what's next. And I tell our players, too, like, guys, I want you to love, absolutely love playing football at Boise State. Love your teammates. Love this, love this area. Love Bronco Nation. But if this is the best time of your life, I absolutely failed you, right? This should be an awesome time in your life, but it should set you up for what God has next, which is the business field. Could be the NFL for some of our guys. But at some point, it's going to be a husband, a father, and getting them trained. This is a training ground development for life. So it's really, it, it's it's amazing to see our guys take that next step with the pro day um, and see those dreams become a reality here. So, how has Billy been handling that setback? Obviously, yeah. had a, was having a great pro day great up day. until that point. 
it, it's tough. I mean, my heart goes out to Billy, um, but he's going to recover from it. He's going to look into it. We're going to get an MRI. I think it's it was to, it, I think it's today. So we're going to get an MRI today um, to see exactly what's going on. But I mean, he's he's one of the toughest young men I've ever been around. I mean, even talking with him immediately after the injury, obviously a lot of emotions when the injury immediately happened. But even later that day, I mean, he's positive. He's coach. We'll figure what it is. I'm gonna be fine. I'm already, you know, working on the stuff the trainers want me to do right now. I'm icing at home. Like, he's a what's next guy, and he's going to be just fine. Well, to, to, to open up the doors to the NFL, you know, and, and see all those logos in your, in your weight room and looking at your players, how, how cool is, is that? It's awesome. I mean, because that's our family, and that's the beautiful thing about Boise State football, Bronco Nation, is this is a family. You come play here, you are a part of this family forever. Not only in, in if you not only just if football is next for you in the NFL, but whatever you do. But especially every single one of our players obviously has a dream to play in the NFL. That's what it is. You come here, you want to play in the NFL, you want to be developed. And so seeing all these guys we've been able to develop and put them in the NFL, guys that have walked on, some guys could go anywhere in the country. It's all variations, East Coast, West Coast, and all have been developed here to play in the NFL. That's really exciting for us. Today we had Matt Paradis come speak to our team. He was at practice. Um, so just as much as I can, bring these guys back to speak to their, their brothers that are here with them, that, were, that are in the same spot they were fighting and scratching, competing to be a starter, to then be an all-Mountain West guy, to then have a shot to get drafted. Um, it's really exciting to bring guys back home. Who's, who would you say is further along, or who's looked better, the offense or the defense? All right, that's a good question, BJ. I think it's pretty neck and neck. Like I'm trying to make sure just the competition is high throughout. That's why I've taken over all ref responsibilities. I even I, I left my flag in the locker. But I'm trying to make sure the biggest thing for me isn't who's winning, who's losing, is how are we competing? Because at the end of the day, and I, I, I even told our defense, we're, we work two minute. Guys, I'm not going to call sacks because at the end of the day, no one remembers what sacks you got in spring ball. No one remembers what sacks you got in fall camp. It's about working these situations so we can grow as a team, not just – and not just let things happen and focus on winning and losing. Now, the individual player, you have to fight and scratch to win your one-on-one. -on -one. We're not taking that heat off it at all. But to, to say who's farther along O or D right now, I'm very excited where our competition is, um, but not focused on BJ, maybe who's doing better than who and who's not.